Okay, so let's talk about heat and temperature. We use these words very commonly in our daily lives, but also in physics, especially in thermodynamics. But the question is, are they the same? Is temperature the same as heat? And if they are different, how different are they? Let's get started. So it turns out many people have misconceptions on what heat and temperature is. Most people think that these two are the same and so we can interchangeably use them. In this video, we'll try to see the fundamental differences between heat and temperature and also the relationship between these two terms. So let's begin with heat. Imagine you're sitting on a campfire and you're feeling this warmth on your skin. This sensation of warmth is caused by heat. Heat is a form of energy, specifically thermal energy that flows from one area to another when there is a temperature difference. To be more specific, heat flows from a hot object to a cold object. So heat is this invisible form of energy that is responsible for making things feel hot or feel cold. The quest to understand heat dates back many centuries ago. The ancient Greek and Egyptians considered heat to be an element called fire. In fact, this is no surprise because fire is one of the earliest and most important inventions of mankind. They considered this to be one of the four fundamental elements of the earth, the other three being earth, air and water and this was their cosmological and philosophical framework, the understanding of the universe at that time. Moving fast forward in the 18th century, which by the way was a period of great scientific enlightenment, scientists like Lavoisier and Rumford proposed the caloric theory to try and explain heat. According to the caloric theory, heat was not a form of energy but rather a fluid-like substance called caloric. And they believed that caloric flows from one object to another, specifically from a hot object to a cold object. And this intuitively explained why objects would get hot when they are heated, because they absorb this fluid-like substance called caloric. Now this being the only theory that could attempt to explain heat at the time, it was widely accepted and it shaped the scientific thinking of what heat was for many years. However, other scientists later discovered that the caloric theory was not an accurate description of what heat entirely is, and that's because it couldn't explain other things, for example, latent heat and some conservation laws. Now, as an example, if you heat water, it reaches a point when its temperature does not increase even though you continue to supply heat. And this is the point where water is turning from liquid to gas state. This kind of hidden heat is called latent heat and is clearly something that the caloric theory would not expect to see. And that's because according to the caloric theory, all this caloric or heat that is absorbed should increase the temperature. Now much as the caloric theory was inaccurate, it helps us understand the basic idea of what heat is as a form of energy which, when absorbed, makes an object hot and when it is lost, makes an object cold. But here's the problem, hot and cold are very subjective. For example, what feels hot to me might not feel as hot to another person because of our different levels of thermosensitivity. Now as physicists, we needed a clear and standard way of quantifying this idea of hot and cold and that's where temperature comes into the picture. So temperature is a number, a scalar quantity that tells us how hot or how cold an object is. From the physics point of view, temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles making up the substance. So when a substance is heated, for instance, the particles start to vibrate faster, the average kinetic energy of those particles increases, therefore the temperature increases. And when the substance loses heat, the particles start to slow down, which means the average kinetic energy decreases and the temperature of the substance drops. When we say an object is hot or cold, we are actually describing the temperature of that object. Our perception and sensation of temperature is based on the intensity of molecular motion within a substance. As an example, if you hold a cup of coffee in your hand, it feels hot. And that's because the particles are moving faster and therefore they have high energy, so the cup has high temperature. But if you were to hold ice in the other hand, then it feels cold. That's because the particles are moving really slow, which means they have very little kinetic energy and therefore 
its temperature is very small. Our skins have evolved to measure these differences in the intensity of molecular motion and send signals to our brain which we interpret as hot or cold. When our skin senses high molecular motion, which as a result means high kinetic energy, then our brain perceives that as hot. And when our skin senses very slow molecular motion, which means less kinetic energy, then it sends signals to our brain, which we interpret as cold. So in summary, heat is the transfer of thermal energy while temperature represents the intensity of molecular motion within a substance. We've also discussed that heat flows from a hot substance to a cold substance. Temperature is a prerequisite for heat to flow. Temperature will only flow if there is a temperature difference between two objects or two substances. If the two substances have the same temperature, then we say they are in thermal equilibrium, so there will be no transfer of heat from one object to another. If we look at it from the lens of molecular motion, that means all the molecules have uniform kinetic energy and so they will not move from one object to the other. So next time you use the words heat and temperature, keep in mind that they represent different aspects of thermal energy. Understanding what heat and temperature are helps us to best describe the physical world around us and to make sense of it. I hope you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to watch more fascinating and interesting science videos like this. I'll catch you in the next one, bye.